There we go. Can you guys see me okay? Hopefully you can. Welcome to our New Year's support group. I'm really excited to talk to all of you tonight. And if you're not able to see it live, then um, don't worry. We are going to be sending out a recording. And I wanted to talk to everybody tonight about staying on track and getting back on track after the holidays. And I think one of the things that we all tend to forget about is during the holidays, you get a little bit off track because you've got family, you've got friends, you wind up eating maybe a little bit more sugar, um, having a few more drinks than you normally do. Hi, Rudy. And when you start to do that, you notice that, I don't know if you're like me, but you start to notice that your hunger increases a little bit. You start to feel, hi, Jen. You start to feel a little bit hungrier in the evening. Hi, Amy. Hi, guys. And in the evenings, you notice you're getting more snacky. During the day, maybe you start to notice you eat a little bit more. And hey, Amanda. And after the holidays, you're like, well, I tried to eat kind of healthy over the holidays. I know I cheated a few times when, you know, I had people over or somebody bought a pie or, you know, whatever it is that you got a little bit off track over the Christmas holidays and over the New Year holidays. But um, what's really common is once that starts to happen, you start to get off track, like all of us, you notice that your hunger is actually higher. So hi, Marie. So in the evenings, you notice you're getting more hungry, more snacky. You can eat a little bit more at each meal. In between meals, your three o'clock time, maybe at work, you start to feel even more hungry than you normally do. Um, what is going on? right? Why is this happening? And why is it so hard to then turn around and get back into the kind of eating habits that you had before Christmas? And the reason why is a pretty simple reason, and it's sugar. Hello there. And your brain reacts to sugar very similarly to how it reacts to crack cocaine. We know this from lots of um, fMRI studies when we look at what happens um, to the brain, how the brain lights up and how the brain reacts to sugar is the exact same mechanism, the exact same patterns that we see are very similar patterns, I should say, to what we see with uh, cocaine addicts. So why is that? Well, part of it is, yes, that sugar has this dopamine response. You know, it elicits a very strong um, insulin response. That's all kind of interesting. But really, it comes to this one thing, and that is our tongue. So if you think about your tongue, what's one of the myths that we're all told when we're kids, when we're growing up, right? We're all told that you've got different sensory areas in your tongue. So one is for bitter, one is for, you know, salty flavors, one is for sugar. Has anybody um, sort of heard that uh, growing up, this idea of your five, um, the five taste senses in your tongue? Not true, actually. That's a big myth. It is absolutely not true. And in fact, our tongues are hardwired really we can the flavors are spread out that we can have some people um don't get all of the flavors some ha are more sensitive to other flavors but the one thing all humans have in common on our tongues is at least ten thousand receptors and they are all wired for sugar so back to what happens with our brain scans when we have sugar and our brains are reacting like crack cocaine, our tongues are wired for sugar. And it gets even weirder. Our intestines have taste buds and they are wired for sugar. Think about that for a minute. And why is that? Well, if you think about human history, sugar used to be super, super rare, right? So maybe you would come across it in fruit. And other than that, really, you couldn't come across sugar. And so almost all of human history, the only time you were really getting sugar was when you were a little, other than fruit, was when you were a little baby and you were breastfeeding. So for humans, we're hardwired to love sugar, need sugar, and react very strongly with sugar because that's what helped us to, to eat and suckle when we were little, when we were babies. Fast forward to today, and we're eating um hundreds of times more sugar than what we would have eaten even 500 years ago. We're eating 160 times more sugar than what we were eating even 100 years ago. So we're eating obscene amounts of sugar that our bodies not just aren't used to, 
but we're hardwired to chew sugar above everything else. And that's what's going on is the sugar itself is sending those receptors to your brain. So when you're saying to yourself, like, it's at night and you're having these cravings again, like, why is it so hard to get back on track? I'm, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to have this stuff. I know it doesn't make me feel good. But then you wind up doing it anyway. And it's because your, your body is actually overriding your brain, just like a crack addict. So, you know, we talk about, well, your brain lights up just like a crack addict. But stop and actually think about what that means, right? We don't say to our crack addict friends, uh, if, if you have crack addict friends in your immediate, you, we don't say to you, okay, so tonight, just don't have any crack. You're going to be fine, right? We really don't. And we don't expect that of people. And so for us, it's the exact same thing. We know that we are addicted to sugar. We're hardwired for sugar. How do you reduce that sugar addiction? Well, it's not that hard. You just have to do it for at least 48 hours and you get the full effect when you've done it for a whole week. So when you cut out all sugar and all processed simple carbohydrates that your body doesn't, it, it treats exactly like sugar. So if you're eating bread, for example, your body doesn't recognize that that's not sugar. As far as your body is concerned, that is sugar. It is processed and turned immediately into glucose. So your fructose, your, your sugar, you cut that out for 24 hours, 48 hours later, you will notice your cravings are significantly reduced. You keep cutting out sugar for seven days, you will notice several things will happen all at once. You're going to have more energy. You notice you're going to start to sleep better. The most important two things that you're going to notice is your cravings for sugar go way, way down. Your, your ability to... Um, enjoy very sweet things becomes lessened. So I mean that in the sense of if you use like a tranny syrup or a sugar-free um, stevia or other drops, you want to have as little bit, little amount of that sweetener, even though it's zero calorie, you want to use as little as possible because you want to de-acclimatize your body from that sugar taste. Remember those 10,000 sugar receptors right on your tongue and even in your intestines that literally change how your body is about to absorb your food, you need to cut that sweet flavor out. So that means, yes, you can have protein treats, but when you're detoxing from sugar after the holidays, really, really important, you actually want to be using less sweetener. So take the recipes, take out some of that stevia, take out some of that extra sweetener. Don't put that extra drop in. When you're mixing your shakes, mix half of it with the, the like vanilla and the other scoop use natural, right? So that you're cutting down on that sweetness. You can go back to the flavor that you like after, after your week is over, but you want to cut down as much as you can on that sweet flavor. Two things are going to happen and they're going to happen at the same time and one helps the other. So the first thing that you're going to notice is you're gonna feel like if you have something with stevia in it, you're gonna be like, oh, that is so sweet. And you're gonna notice it's too sweet. Whereas if you have it tonight, if you've been kind of cheating a little bit, it's just gonna taste pretty good. So the second thing is that because now you're not having any sugar, your body is now using your fat stores for energy, right? Your um, insulin isn't, isn't spiking, so you're not storing body fat. Your body starts to burn ketones for your brain function, and you're starting to burn your actual fat stores, and that's what you want. But the amazing thing that happens is your stomach will hold less food. And it's very much like um, when you – have you ever gotten the flu, right? You get – really, really sick and you say you were throwing up for a few days and you got a terrible fever and you can barely keep anything down, then you start to feel better. And when you go back to eating raw food, you can only eat the tiniest amount of food after you've been sick, right? You feel so full on a tiny little bit. That mechanism happens because you've reset your full signal. And what I mean by that is there's such a couple of mechanisms that take place when you feel full. And it's one of the reasons why Nutricell is so critically important, why it has that prebiotic fiber in it. And that is when your 
stomach fills up. The top part of your stomach is called the esophageal gastric junction. Then you have your fundus, the big round part of your stomach. And then right down here, you have your pyloric valve. And that pyloric valve is what decides when it's going to start letting the food that that is that the acids are mixing up, let it move down and continue down the digestive system. When we eat, the pyloric valve stays kind of closed. So all that food fills up in the stomach and it fills up close to the esophageal gastric junction. Anybody that's ever thrown up, so if you've ever thrown up or you've ever gagged and something's like pressed down here on that esophageal gastric junction, that will make you puke, it'll make you throw up. That's also a full signal. So when you when food gets pushed back up this way, you can't put another um, bite down. When you start to eat a lot of sugar, sugar doesn't just have all the taste sensors, but those 10,000 taste sensors do something extraordinary. They literally loosen your stomach. So your the muscle that your stomach is made out of, it, it distends. It goes like this. So if I'm your stomach right here, these are my hands are your stomach. You eat sugar, it touches your lips, just like this, touches your tongue, a little bit of sugar, just like that. The reaction inside your body is this, sugar, that, stomach just goes way bigger, look at it in front of the camera, way bigger, just like that, that fast. It's the reason why that, you know, your grandmother might have always, you might have always heard your grandmother say this, there's always room for dessert, right? There's always room for dessert. That's a, that is the mechanism that is taking place. Those 10,000 taste buds on your tongue. And they're doing even worse than that. Those 10,000 um, uh, little taste buds on your tongue, you touch it, your stomach grows in size. Literally, it relaxes and distends. That means that the same meal that you're eating that's followed by that bit of sweetness, you can actually fit way more in before you feel full. The next thing that, <laughs> the next thing that it does is you feel full more quickly again afterwards. So what we want to do is get back to how we felt before the holidays when we start to get off track. How do you do that? So when you cut out that sugar, when you cut out the sweet flavor, you're not desensitizing your stomach. Your stomach is staying smaller. So you're going to notice that as your sugar addiction comes, as you get used to not having sugar, your body stops to crave it. You're not wanting sugar as much. You're also going to notice at the same time that it happens, it always happens in tandem, that the amount you can eat at each meal becomes less, and you're going to notice your cravings become less. Now, really, really important, during this time, this is not a time to be fasting. This is not a time to start doing intermittent fasting. This is not. This is the time that you want to be loading up on your protein, and you want to be loading up on your fiber. And why do I say that? Because it comes back to what happens with your stomach. You want slow digesting food and you want to eliminate willpower. What do I mean by that? Well, we get told this all the time, practice willpower, blah, 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 get a new habit, right? There's some truth to some of that, but most of it is not true in the context of food. With willpower, it's more like a tank of gas. The more times you have to say no to temptation, the more of your willpower you use up and the less you have left over when you need it. So if you move sugar out of the way so that you're not tempted by any sugar, but you're also replacing it so that you have nearby a shake or a smoothie or a non-sweet protein treat, especially one that's filling that's made with Nutricel and fiber, that's gonna do exactly the same thing. You're not running on willpower anymore because you're filling your little stomach or your big stomach, you're filling it with that prebiotic fiber, which slows down the digestion of the protein in Nutricel. When it slows down the, the, the protein, that increases the satiety time. In other words, you feel fuller longer. You feel fuller longer than if you just had a regular shake that didn't have the prebiotic fiber and you feel a lot fuller than if you just had the prebiotic fiber without the protein. So they work together. So just to recap how you want to do this, because you can't just leave yourself to your own defenses and start telling yourself, well, I'm just not going to eat this stuff, right? It's the new year, new leaf, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to do my meal prep Sunday and I'm just going to say no to this stuff. And I'm not going to eat it. 
And then somebody puts something in front of you and you're like, whoa, right? And then you have it. You need to address the situation right where you are now. And that means you have to literally get off your sugar addiction. So you need to cut out all sugar and all simple carbohydrates. That means no fruit, right? That means no, you don't want the fructose that's in there. You don't want the carbohydrates that are going to spike your blood sugar. And you want to have no sweet flavors, no as little stevia as you can. Do that for a few days. Get through a full week where you have had no sugar. And you are going to notice right away that your cravings go back down. They become manageable. You're going to notice you eat less at each meal. You're going to notice that your cravings during the day and in the evening become very manageable. When you increase your protein during that time, you're going to feel really full, especially as you near the end of that week. You're going to feel like you can't even finish your shake. You can't even eat more food. That's the feeling that we really want for you before you start to go back to your regular routine with your regular Sunday meal prep. So you really need to treat this as your reset for how you're going to get over what happened in the weekend because sugar is more powerful than we give it credit for. We think we should just do better but it isn't. It's like crack cocaine. And so we need to treat it a little bit like crack cocaine and get ourselves into, into uh, rehab. So we're gonna, all going to go to sugar rehab right now. And we're all going to get back on track for our evenings and our weekends and get our cravings under control. I hope that helps everybody. Does anybody have any questions before we, before we wrap up with our, our what to do with sugar? Sugar rehab, it is not about willpower. It is filling up on that protein. It is getting rid of the sweet taste, just to recap. And if you really want to have a thought in your head and a picture in your head before you start the rest of this week, you guys, think of the two rats in the lab that Dr. Kenny um, researched. And the question was, why is it that we mammals will eat and eat and eat and eat? And how far will we go? And think of this in your head when you're thinking of having some sugar over the next week and how important it is to detox. They took mice, they gave half of the mice healthy food, and they gave the other half high fat, high sugar food. The ones that had the healthy food, they electrocuted them, gave them little shocks, and then they did the same thing to the ones on the high fat, high sugar foods. Guess what? The ones eating the healthy food all stopped eating when they got shocked. The ones eating the sugar, the high fat, high sugar foods, would keep eating even though they were getting shocked. And in fact, they would eat themselves to death. Our brains react the identical way to sugar as those rats do. We will eat ourselves to death. We will eat ourselves to heart disease. We will eat ourselves out of our size eight pants. <laughs> we will do it because sugar tastes good. But it, remember that. Don't give it up to willpower. Follow these things, and um, you will find after about a week that you will be back in control again. You'll feel really good. <laughs> That's funny. All right, you guys, have a good night. I will send out the email with the recording for this um, in the next day. Good night, guys. Stay away from sugar.